Namaste and welcome to this Tuesday edition of the Right Stand. I'm Anand Narsimhan. Four yesterday, 19 today. If it were the number of bills passed in Parliament, we would only be so proud and so happy. Wow, Parliament is functioning. So much work is being done. Janhit mein kaam ho raha hai. But the reality, ladies and gentlemen, is it was four in the Lok Sabha yesterday and it is 19 today in the Rajya Sabha. It's the highest number of suspensions. MP suspended in a single batch that's happened today. Unprecedented. In the Rajya Sabha, the thinking house, the house that is supposed to ensure that the elected representatives who come into the Lok Sabha do their job properly. It's the upper house in parliament where this kind of behavior that has forced the chairman to suspend 19 MPs. 19 MPs suspended from Trinamool Congress, DMK, TRS, a lot of them. Makes you also wonder, yesterday it was four MPs of the Congress party in the Lok Sabha, today it is all the non-Congress led opposition in the Rajya Sabha. Is there a competition going on between these two? Ki kiske jata suspend hote hain? Who will then debate? If it comes to vote, if it comes to critical bills that are tabled, will the opposition have the numbers there if these MPs are suspended? The 19 of them have been suspended for a week. There is also the elections for the vice president coming. So are they really, really into it? Do they really want parliament to function? I hope a lot of you remember that Sumitra Mahajanji back in 2019, if I remember correctly, had suspended 45 members of parliament. That included AI, DMK, and also at that time, it was the Chandra Babu Naidu faction at that time. His party. But is this what they're going to do? Last year, 12 MPs suspended for the whole year because of din disruption, Bangla in parliament. We saw that. What is the opposition's game plan here? They are saying important issues are not being discussed. Government is saying you allow parliament to function, we will discuss. At the end of the day, it is your and mine, taxpayers' money which is being laid to waste in a critical session of parliament after two years of COVID when we are poised for growth in our 75th year of independence. India or ideology? What is the opposition choosing? We ask tonight. Less, yeah, this government has suspended democracy. Modi and Shah have suspended democracy. What are you talking about, MPs? क्या कांग्रेस को लगता है कि गांधी परिवार के लिए अलग से कानून बनना चाहिए? क्या कांग्रेस को ये लगता है कि गांधी परिवार से जांच करनी भी गुनाह है? Aprajita Sarangi, BJP MP and national spokesperson is there with us today. Putting political opportunity above India is the question that we are asking. India or ideology or individual, what should be important? Opposition disrupts parliament is the hashtag. Aprajita Sarangi ji is with us. We are hoping that Babul Shupriyo, Trinamool Congress national spokesperson, also with us, a former member of parliament when he was with the BJP. And of course, uh, Jaydeep Majumdar, associate editor of Swarajya. Let me ask before I go to Aprajita Ji, what, how, what would you, can you put a finger on what is ho going on? I think uh, uh, there was, uh, there has been a lot of uh, warnings issued by, uh, by, the, by the, uh, 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 the Lok Sabha Speaker and the Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman that uh, such sort of disruptions won't be tolerated. And I think it's a good thing that, uh, uh, you know, there is an attempt to turn over a new leaf. It's not like, okay, the BJP used to disrupt parliament when it was in opposition. Now, uh, so we are also doing it. So this, there has to be, a, it has to stop, you know. There has to be a clean break away from this. And I think that's a good thing, that there'll be no tolerance of uh, 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 such disruptions in parliament. I mean, no unparliamentary behavior. Parliament is meant for debates. Parliament, I would, as, as I said yesterday also, as a taxpayer, I would like to know why the prices of essential commodities or all the commodities are going up. And mm. I'd like to hear the government to come up with the reasons for it. Mm. But if this sort of disruptions continue, there'll be no scope for a debate in parliament. There'll be no scope for the government to come up 
with mm. uh, you know with w- w- why with the reasons and as a citizen i'll be deprived of of no, m- of, no- of knowing no, but, but, but is it fair for the government let me also ask you this jadeep is it fair for the government to say all right we'll discuss it but allow other business to first uh, happen we'll do this all of this business and we will list this i know we are these are your concerns you want to discuss gst you want to discuss price rise and inflation you want to discuss these aspects but we'll discuss it right now abhi finance minister is indisposed abhi time nahi hai we'll do it after 3 4 days let other business happen i i think it's pretty fair is that the finance minister is the one who will be replying to this uh, uh, to the concerns raised by members of the house how of the two houses and i think it's only fair that she she's uh, in this post she's suffering uh, from covid a uh, covid infection so why don't why the why can't the opposition members uh, uh, you know wait for two to three days uh, that the government is, all, uh, is never saying that no the, the the finance minister is not going to come on to the floor of the house because she is in this post and this discussion is not going to take place government is saying give us two to three days time i mm. think it's fair to for the opposition to allow the government two to three days time mm. Well, Babu Shupriyo is also through with us. Babu, namaste. This is Anand Narsimhani. Are good to have you with us. You are on the you are you are, you are sitting on another bench. The last time we spoke on air, today you are here, and I'm uh, I'm glad to see that you're doing well after you changed uh, uh, tax and uh, you know decided to take your political career in a different direction. But uh, and and greetings to your loved ones also I, who are I, taking I, I, who 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 are taking a sneak peek into so this much. broadcast. But uh, but but I let. Not, I did not take my political uh, stand to a different path. I have, you know, Swaraja ji. Uh, you know, as spokesperson, we all are expected to have a good debate on. Hmm. Uh, so I felt that I was not being fa- treat, uh, treated fairly and made a scapegoat for whatever happened in Bengal. Hmm. So besides the point, what I heard. Uh, I, I can't see the name of the gentleman. Jaydeep uh, Jaydeep Majumdar, editor Swaraj is with us, and I, we have Aprajita Sarangi yeah. also of the BJP. So yes, Babu Shubham, yeah, go yeah. ahead please. I, I just want to make two points. He he was making the points of you know uh, Nirmala Sitharaman ji being in this post. Well, we would uh, definitely wanted to get well soon, but uh, there have been umpteen number of instances in the parliament where the Home Minister has. Uh, you know, answered for the defence ministry. Hmm. The defence minister has spoken about agriculture, uh, where the you know, uh, and several ministers. You know, a cab- hmm. cabinet. Uh, the cabinet is 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 something which is of collective responsibility. So uh, while there could be who and cry, but there have been BJP themselves have played. The ruling party has created the uh, uh, has created instances where uh, other ministers have answered questions. So, what is the most important burning question in the country right now? It is, it is definitely the price rise. It is the uh, the GST on commodities uh, rice, hmm. milk, curd. What else can go worse? You know, I understand that there is a uh, there is a agenda. Uh, you know, they could have that the uh, the ruling party, the government must have listed a lot of items that needs to be discussed and debated. but when when the opposition and the government meets in the parliament after a long time it is not that every day you go to the parliament and therefore can follow a fixed routine it, it there is a routine mm-hmm. but when they meet after such a long time i think the burning questions needs to be brought on the floor at at the at the first instance mm-hmm. uh, so that there is no reason it could be the other way around the government is the okay after we are meeting after such a long time let's discuss what you what do you think are the burning questions and thereafter we'll carry on with the business i think that ke- it is the responsibility of the government to ensure that the parliament runs mm. on the first day you infuriate the uh, you know how many how many let me let me ask you one thing mm. let me let, let me uh, you know put it uh, put it this way that uh, you know uh, from 2017 to 2022 not even one discussion has been allowed under rule 267 in the rajya sabha mm. that the that, that this means for this is this is this is the data mm. so i don't think this is uh, it, it is it is appropriate hmm. to uh, to suspend mps when well, you can bring any rule on the ground but at a at a point when the uh, the biggest one of the biggest which the uh, trauma of the country is price rise uh, whether it is gas petrol and uh, and one side you bring the prices of the fuel up hmm. and the other side the food prices are going up as well hmm. so there is that can be met first and then the government can go ahead with the agenda but it hmm. seems that you know this bulldozing has been and when i was on the other side hmm. trust me in the in the in the uh, central hall hmm. all mps uh, hmm. sitaro ke aage jahan aur bhi hai politics ke aage bhi ek jahan hai Correct. there are a lot of friends we sit together hmm. and there are 
there have been uh, discussions where the manner in which the, uh, the bills were passed in Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha last time without any discussion, mm. farm bills mm. passed without discussion. What is the natija? You just see what is the natija. It mm. is not. Uh, it had to be retracted. The government had to retract on that. CA, CA, NRC. Well, at that point of time, I did support that. I had that is that was my. I, I played for that team, so obviously I did what I I am expected to do. But the fact is that that also did not go with a with a very healthy discussion. What happened? Even today, it is not notified. Nothing has happened on that front. So mm. the government needs to let the opposition discuss when they come back after a long long break. I right. think that way so, the government so, will see the world. Let Aparajita Sarangi respond. Aparajita Sarangi. A very good evening. It's extremely unfortunate that today 19 MPs of hmm. Rajya Sabha were suspended. Hmm. And I can say with all conviction that this particular action was taken with hmm. a very heavy heart. Hmm. Now I would like to draw your kind attention to the hmm. Committee on Ethics of Rajya Sabha which had hmm. drafted a report and which was adopted by the Rajya Sabha in April 2005. Hmm. In fact, uh, this particular committee recommended and Rajya Sabha adopted. It said members should hold in high esteem the constitution, the law, parliamentary institutions and general public. Mm. I have gone through that committee's report which mm. has been adopted mm. and it, it lays down 14 principles. The first principle states that the members must not do anything that brings disrepute to the parliament and affect their credibility. I would request all the esteemed colleagues of mine, both in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, to kindly go through the recommendations of this committee which have been duly adopted. Hmm. Now, the suspension for a week has taken place under Rule 256, which is, hmm. which is also amply clear. I need not waste time on reading out what Rule 256 is all about. Hmm. See, there has to be maintenance of decorum. We hmm. have to live within Lakman. Lakshman Rekha hmm. when we are within the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, right? And there can be absolutely no compromise with the dignity of the house. Hmm. There has to be a method, there has to be a procedure hmm. and we have to respect the parliamentary procedures. I think uh, all the people of the country, about 140 crore Indians are expecting a lot from all of us who have been sent with a lot of aspirations and a lot of hopes to the Lok Sabha and yes. all those who are in the Rajya Sabha, I am sure they also carry with them many hopes and aspirations. So yes. I think we need to uh, uh, behave with a sense of responsibility. See, who mm. says we do not want discussion? See, I have a, a strong hunch since mm. I'm a member of the parliament and I keep sitting there day in mm. and day out, mm. the opposition does not want to hold discussion. See, they have, they, they have to understand that there is a difference between Sadak and Sansad. Mm. On the Sadak, you can shout, you can create a ruckus, you can indulge in all kinds of hooliganism. Mm. But in the Sansad, you have to act as per a certain uh, mm. uh, uh, norm. And we have to conform to those standards of conduct. There can be absolutely no compromise with that. Mm. And as far as the uh, discussions are concerned, mm. I will take you to 17th July when the Sarv Daliye Baitak had been convened and mm. Sri Malikarjun Kharge had given a list of about 13 issues which they wanted discussion on mm. and we had said all to the yes to that mm. and then you know there is a system, there is a business advisory committee and there is a way of putting forth views and we are all well aware of the fact that finance minister is unwell, she is recovering from COVID and we are assuring that we would be having discussion. So I think this ruckus, this disturbance is being created to actually uh, 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 remain relevant in the system. They know that they are not relevant and that is why they are creating this uproar. We right. want work. Right. Do they want work? Hmm. Just so, ask them whether they want work. Right. And I tell you, I'll just give you an example. Give me 30 seconds, please. Hmm. Hmm. Day before yesterday, the Antarctica Bill 2022 was passed by the Lok Sabha. Now, what was the situation? When the discussions started, the, the ruling party members started giving their viewpoints and suddenly the chair looked at, looked towards his left where the opposition people were there and suddenly they staged a walkout. They said, we don't want to talk. Now, we want viewpoints. We want debate on the uh, bill. 
Mm. We wanted the suggestions of the people, and but they were not there. They just staged a walkout. Is this the way to behave? What does the government do? Government has to has to take the country forward. Now I tell with all conviction at my command that Prime Minister Modi's government is not right. just here to run the government. It wants to take the nation forward, right. and it is a combined responsibility of both the right. opposition Please and eat. the ruling so, party to run the parliament. Right now, Jaydeep Majumdar uh, wanted to make an intervention, and then I'll come to Babu Shupriyo. So he's he's been raising his hand for a bit. So yes, Jaydeep Majumdar. Uh, uh, just one thing here. I think it's a bit rich for the number of people to talk about. Uh, the spending of uh, MP and how wrong it is. Uh, I agree with him that uh, burning issues of the day has to have to be raised in in, mm. in the house in the in the assembly or something. But I'll take him back to March uh, uh, this year mm. uh, when there was a horrific incident in West Bengal where uh, eight people were burned to death uh, in retaliation for the death of uh, for the murder of a Trinamool uh, uh, panchayat worker or uh, you know a ground level uh, leader. Mm. Now, when the BJP MLAs in the house. Uh, protested against, wanted to raise this uh, or discuss this, and 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 raise a point of order, and they took to the well of the house. There was pandemonium. Uh, uh, Trinamool MLAs got down to the well of the house and alleged assaulted the BJP uh, MLAs, and seven of them were suspended, not for just one week or the rest of the session, but for one year. It's a different matter. Uh, the suspensions were later on lifted only last month. But mm. this happens in West Bengal. I think it's a uh, it's a bit rich on the part of the Trinamool to now come out, come out and say that what what is uh, this is uh, you know uh, democracy is being subverted in Parliament. Mm. So and so you're saying you, they don't they don't practice what they, they preach in the in the assembly and what they're uh, asking that should be practiced in Parliament. So Babu Shupriyo one by one, Aparajita Sarangis and then then Jaydeep Majumdar. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jadi ji, I knew this uh, this issue is going to come up and able to bring this up. But do you actually have you seen the footages or are you aware what actually happened inside the Vidhan Sabha on that day? Chairs were broken. Chairs were broken. There was you, what you said that the uh, ruling party MLAs actually assaulted the uh, the uh, opposition, the BJP MLAs. There are two. That's one side of the story. There's the other side of the story that exists, and therefore, you know, the same thing is said by even the uh, the. The MLAs of TNC uh, that the ladies, the ladies. There are more ladies in the ruling party than there are in the. How many ladies do we have in the BJP side? So the ladies were assaulted and the uh, the BJP MPs. They were very agitated and they were too close to female uh, MLAs inside the inside the assembly. So let's not. Uh, yes, they were suspended, but I think that magnanimity was shown. Magnanimity was shown when uh, the speaker said uh, on, on an appeal. That you can write a letter, and we are going to take it back, and that's what exactly happened. Now, when it answering to what uh, you know, uh, 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 Rajita Sarangi, Madam said, uh, she is talking about relevance. I think that there is nothing more relevant in the country than the uh, than the GST on you know rice plates, rice, milk, curd, or there is nothing more relevant than price rise or uh, inflation. Uh, so, so what is what is what is big? What is the big harm if you are, you have majority in, in the uh, Lok Sabha, in the Rajya Sabha? Uh, by doing this, I think you are somehow losing the credibility because the people who can vote against you in certain bills or would debate uh, the validity of certain bills, you are expelling them when no, you but, can. But, but in the in the day if, before if parliament, can, yeah, yeah. The day before can, parliament, what uh, 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 Aprajita Sarangi is saying, uh, and because you've been there, uh, Babu Shukla, you'll be able to corroborate this. <laughs> That, that there was a list of 13 issues that was presented by the opposition and and the yes. government said we will discuss all issues in this session. They have not but said why? we will not. No, 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 but no, at no, that, that is, time did the opposition that actually that insist that we will not do it tomorrow. We will not do it tomorrow. We will not do it tomorrow. That is, see, I have been in the parliament for uh, eight years. Uh, yes, you, I, 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 you know, I, I am sitting on the other side. I understand. But you know, let's go by the data. You know, hmm. uh, they, they, you know, in the last session of the parliament, even in the budget session, there were 10 to 12 opposition parties that we have in the parliament. Was any discussion allowed? No. How many bills were passed? Hmm. How many bills? 27 bills were passed. What yeah. is the average? Uh, uh, you know, average. Uh, it's, it's alarming. What hmm. is the number of minutes, uh, which is the average time that was taken to pass a bill? Nine minutes. Hmm. So if you are, if the government is really wanting to discuss something and debate of the good and bad sides of a bill, which hmm. is been the essence and what the parliament is there for, for deliberation, for debate, you know. Yeah, but she is saying this time and around, why, yes, why day, day, what she is saying is day before yesterday when this bill was going to be discussed, the opposition yeah. walked out. They said, we don't want to discuss the bill. 
तो ऐसे में सरकार बिल पास ही करेगी ऑपोजिशन डिस्कस ही नहीं करने को तैयार है तो वॉकआउट करेगा तो क्या करेगी That is exactly what I am saying. That if the opposition brings up relevant, she said it is not relevant, or she is talking about relevance. Uh, you know, with due respect to her, let me understand. Let me let me reiterate this fact. The country is really reeling from the price rise and everything else. So if the opposition opposition wants to discuss that first. पार्लियामेंट फ्रॉम जुलाई and not allow business to be conducted yes yes babu shukla and then aparajita ji and then jyadi kya yeah yeah i just tell me one thing you know let tell me one thing it's a, this is a, this is not a political question this is a common sense question hmm. the opposition right now has enough enough uh, you know muddas as it mean up the issues to put the government on the dock there are several like it was pegasus earlier and all that which the government did not allow it to happen and the bills were passed without when there was pandemonium in the parliament i was present there yeah. now the point is that when the opposition has enough issues to corner the government why wouldn't the uh, uh, the opposition want those issues to be raised in the parliament and want the want the uh, ministers to answer that uh, and 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 for the country to see it it's a it's, it's a, a it's fair a question, question that you ask it's a yes, fair it's, it's, a, it's a very situation. fair question that you are asking and one second ji it's a win win situation for the for the government if they do not allow a discussion on the burning topics one and if it's also a win win situation if you have people you know you can cap people suspending suspended or which is unfair suspended and walking out you can pass the bills without any kind without of without any discussion like so you are saying that this is a so case where the government has a chit mein jeeta heads i win tails you lose kind of a situation yes, my, yes, sir, my, a, a, a please aprajita sarangi will will answer that, that my simple is. my simple point is that if you know that somebody or a person responsible the minister responsible is out with covid and this you know on the 17th of july 18th of july parliament begins you can wait for at least a week say till the 26 27th sir. of july say let's do all the other business on the 27th or 28th of july if the if If the What? honorable finance minister is still not able to come back then the government has to assure that another person competent enough either the mos or the commerce and industries minister will step in and answer answer and and, and the debate and discussion will be held well, well, has that well, has that happened anand ji anand i see we have one one sorry sorry i'm just taking 30 seconds not even you know for a very long time we have seen the finance minister uh, you know uh, giving a uh, press conferences and everything in english and we had the mos anurag thakur just doing the same thing in hindi hmm. so if if the if the finance minister is not present let the mos come and if if, if he thinks that maybe vevana ji is going to do it in english let him answer it in hindi hmm. we have seen that that's the tradition that bjp created number one hmm. number two is how many questions did uh, prime minister honorable prime minister take on the floor of the rajya sabha in the last 7 years hmm. not even a single one hmm. so if this is a burning question If this is a burning question that the opposition Correct. wants to discuss. Correct, but first the competent minister has to answer, then the no, prime no, minister has to offer everything. Why, why, yeah, yeah, but why? you had a fair question. Why can't the MOS finance answer? Why can't the MOS finance answer? Why wait? My, my counter question to that was that if the finance minister wants to answer, could you not have waited for five days? That's why. You cannot say. You cannot say why would the prime minister come for everything. You cannot say that it would have been relevant if the prime minister had created the example. by by coming to the parliament and asking questions correct but the point is question. there there yes, what happens is see yes, i i am just saying that, that there is that here this is a heads i win tails you lose that. for a for yes, for yes, the yes. for the opposition why because if the prime minister steps up to answer bhai ye sarkar mein to ek hi vyakti sab kuch chalata hai wo modi hai na ab nahi jawab diya to modi jawab kyu nahi de raha so it is like acha idhar se bhi dol bajayenge idhar se bhi bajayenge jahan se sound zyada aayega conveniently but ek minute but you raised a fair point babu shubhyo let let aprajita sarangi please answer that 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 you said that that why can't the mos finance not answer why why couldn't there be must realize that 
about 133 crore rupees have gone away from public exchequer in all these seven, eight days. And who is responsible for this? We are losing rupees 2.5 lakh per minute. And I think this is a waste. And all these people who are creating a ruckus are going down in the estimation of the people of India. Mm. This I really wanted to put forth very candidly, very emphatically. Mm. This is one part. Mm. Number two, I would like to mention here, rather I would take you down to a date in history. 15th March 1989, for unruly and unparliamentary behavior, mm. 63 members of Lok Sabha had been suspended. At that point of time, Sri Rajiv Gandhiji was the Prime Minister. So it's not that 19 MPs is a huge number and we have not, we have done something which is wrong, absolutely not wrong. There can be no compromise when there is unruly and unparliamentary behavior. Hmm. Now, the third question, the question that has been raised by Mr. Suprio, for whom I have uh, tremendous respect, he was ex-parliamentarian, my colleague in the Lok Sabha. I must say that Honorable Prime Minister has a team with him. He was also part of that team once upon a time and he knows that the minister has to speak on behalf of the prime minister most of the times and that is the decorum that is the uh, uh, situation and that is what is expected and i think we are all we, we know what the constitution is like and what are parliamentary procedures so as per the parliamentary procedure the minister has to answer and this is a very important issue i fully agree gst hike and then you know the price rise and the unemployment and whatever they want to talk about hmm. these are very important matters maybe not for them but for us so i think we need to wait for madam nirmala sitaraman to come come with facts and figures and please please cross right. question us when she speaks on the floor of the house do cross question her we are ready for any kind of question and we would be giving all answers but right. you need to have patience don't try to be news items every day Hmm. In fact, this is being what? trying where, to be where, new where, where You, can, you can't grudge the opposition their, 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 uh, their need to be in the news and their right to be in the news and they will protest. But the fact is if they have agreed that certain aspects not are rules of, and, and no we should problem. not, we will not uh, no break those rules, then patient. they shouldn't break those rules. I have to wind up because I've got to move to the next debate. Babul Shupriyo, Babul Shupriyo and then Jaidu Majumdar, 30-30 seconds each, 30-30 seconds each, yeah. I just want to make... I just want to say one thing in response to what she said. She said that as a part of the ministry, yes, of the Council of Ministers, yes, I know that the MOSs and the ministers will have to represent the cabinet and answer on behalf of the Prime Minister. Now, what I'm trying to say is that since most of the time, she used the words verbatim, that most of the time the minister will have to answer. Since the Prime Minister has never answered anything in the last seven years, and it, since he said that every debate is going to be welcomed, as you He's said, then this probably has been talking this to us on all issues. Not, not one, not one. Come mm. on, please. Let's, let's accept the data. Okay. He is the Prime Minister question. who is okay. the most now, now it is coming one. to the fact that why isn't the Prime Minister answering? The first of all, why isn't some other minister answering? Why isn't the <laughs> MOS answering? Now why isn't the Prime Minister? My, my point is, yes. why, can, can there be, can there be the a wait course. of another two or three days till Ms. Sitaraman re uh, 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 recovers? By, till then, can the opposition participate in other meaningful uh, debates? Because there are other important bills, also key bills that need to be passed, where again we need debate and discussion uh, on behalf of the Janta. Because the opposition is the conscience, is the, is the conscience keeper inside the floor in the in the floor of the house in the floor of the house. And now, Jadeep Majumdar, final word. Je, uh, uh, yeah. A quick observation. Whenever uh, yeah, we have had yeah. a quick observation in the past, whenever there have been discussions on uh, the, uh, as demanded by the opposition on important issues, hmm. what we have seen generally is that the opposition hurls a lot of allegations. And when the minister starts mm. speaking, yeah. the opposition becomes hellbent mm. on not allowing the minister to speak. And as a result of that, the country is deprived from knowing the actual situation. Here mm. also, my fear is that when Nirmala Sitaramanji starts replying to the opposition charges right. about price rise and all that, the opposition will not allow her to speak. Mark my words, they will do exactly no, that. No, if they, they do that, then they'll parliament. be held accountable because we'll hold the mirror to them on that day also and we'll come back and ask. You and wanted you created din and disruption, Babul asking, Sikhi. seeking answers and when the answers were given, you further created din and disruption, and then where is your responsibility? We'll take that forward at that time. Aprajita Sarangi, Babu Shupriyo and Jadeep Majumdar. Thank you very, very much. Quickly moving on, ladies and gentlemen, to a CNN News 18 exclusive and you have to have the alarm bells ringing. Ten days before the third anniversary of the abrogation of Article 370, the second anniversary of the Bhumi Pujan at Ram Janbhumi, 
and of course 20 days before our 75th Independence Day when India turns 75. There are those who are waiting to launch themselves or unleash themselves on Indian soil. Jihadi outfits are at the ready. We have got the geolocation or the locations of not just the launch pads, but also one step back to the terror training camps. Three important sectors where the terror factories are operational, fully operational. And it's a mixed module where the jihadi tanzims have combined efforts like the United Jihad Council. So the Lashkar, Jaish, Al-Badr, Hizbul Mujahideen, Harkatul Mujahideen and also the Jammu and Kashmir Ghaznavi force. All of them have now actually pooled in resources. Here are the camps in this right stand exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. Multiple camps, the first one in Manchera, Muzaffarabad and Kotli. Three ones. First is Manchera with three camps in Balakot, Garhi, Habibullah and also Boi. Then the next one is in Muzaffarabad. Muzaffarabad is the capital of uh, POK in that region, the biggest area, biggest city, that is Muzaffarabad. And you have uh, close to that, you have in Abdullah bin Masood, Dulai, Chela Bandi, and also Shawainala. Four camps there, and then also in Kotli. The next set, next cluster is in Kotli. And in Kotli, the, the locations are again four places. You have Sensa, Kotli, Gulpur, Dubgi, and of course the fifth one, that is Fagosh. So five camps in Kotli, four camps in Muzaffarabad, and three camps in Manchera, including Balakot, ladies and gentlemen. Also, more information that we have, top intelligence sources have given CNN News 18 explosive details of the terror training camps in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Now, what we've learned is that three permanent clusters are fully operational, and these are in Manchera, Muzaffarabad, and Kotli. The ISI has facilitated. All camps are active. And the host, they host a combined training for Lashkar, JEM, Al-Badr, Hizbul, HUM, Kader. That's what they are doing. And they work mainly as feeders to launch pads in the, in the forward areas. That's what they are doing. Now, let's try and understand which are these forward areas and where the plots are. Now, here what we are seeing is the forward areas. So, the forward areas are Gurez, Kale. Then, you come to the Neelam Valley. There is Tangdar, Uri, Chakoti, Gulmarg, Punch, Rajori, Noshera and Sundarbani sector. So these are all the areas where they have forward launch pads in and around, not so far away from the LOC and from the international border, just about 3 to 4 kilometers. That's the maximum range. So some within 2 to 3 kilometers of the LOC and then also near the international border. Now Pakistan is able to launch multiple attacks, in, uh, infiltration attempts and execute these operations significantly. Also, we've got to understand very clearly at this point, the information that we've got is that largely the Kader are all coming in. They come here trained together in mixed modules, Lashkar, Jaish, Al-Badr, HM, HUM, all of them together. The Kader are coming largely from South Punjab. They are huge, just about 20s, in their 20s, recruited from this region. Nature of training, arms and also Fidayeen attacks. And they move just before the winter. The OGWs, they're supervised and helped by the OGWs who also pick up the weapons drops that are sent by the ISI. Uh, via drones and these drones are also operated from in and around the launch pads where the Pakistan military also has its brigades like in Kotli they have their own brigades a colonel of the Pak army is actually training all of them now do we need a fresh cleanup and strike is that the way forward should this be preventive and preemptive that's the question that we are asking because all this information is present if CNN News 18 can access this Clearly, the powers that be have more information. I have uh, General J.J. Singh joining us at this point, former Chief of Army Staff. Sushant Sarinji, Senior Fellow at ORF, Strategic Affairs Expert is with us. And we also have Dr. Kamar Chima, Strategic and Political Analyst, Pakistan. General Saab, Namaste. Sushant Ji, Namaste. Kamar Chima Ji, Namaste. General Saab, let me first ask you, if this is the build-up that's happening, and we are given to understand the jihadi tanzims are getting restless. They were asked to stay dormant or quiet till the time the FATF grey list Pakistan moved up and there was clarity there and there was a certain settlement as far as ceasefire is concerned. But the pressure is mounting with these tanzims getting restless. What should India do? Should we still wait and watch, wait for them to come here? Or should we launch something which is preemptive? 
Anand, in my opinion, Pakistan is getting more and more frustrated because their original plan of OPTOPAC is no longer visible. It's disappeared. What they tried to do in three stages to grab some parts of Kashmir if they could not do it in conventional war, they have tried to do with the proxy war. It is clearly failed. Today, Kashmir, with the abrogation of Article 370, is very manageable because there is no political interference in the actions of the government of the day. Hmm. And what is being seen, I just spent a week in various parts of Kashmir, which included Baramula, Uri, Gulmag, Sonamar, Pahalgam, and Srinagar. And I came to the conclusion that the people want peace so that there is prosperity. Also, one recent case, which is the beginning of the, hmm. I would say, snowball effect, is the fact that in a village in uh, uh, Kashmir, it is in Riyasi district, uh, the Pakistani L.E.T. Commander Talib Hussain and another militant were handed over by the people who overpowered them and handed them to the police. Hmm. Now this is where the role of the people is happening and I feel Kashmir is going to see its uh, future in, written in golden letters. Second point, the POK people are watching with interest what's going on in India and hmm. in Kashmir. And if they see the kind of development taking place with the railway line, the activity in the airports, the roads being widened, they feel that they are totally neglected mm. and they are going to themselves fall into our lap. We don't have to do much according to my judgment. Mm. In a few years, they will opt to be with uh, India and we will be with the rest of Kashmir. Mm. So, but what do we do with these Tanzims? Because these Tanzims are operating on what is sovereign Indian soil. They may be occupied by the Pakistanis, but they are, they are very close to where they are. And we've also seen their effort to dig tunnels. They may have 200, 300 of their cadre there and if there are more, because uh, there are a lot of them who are turning jihadis because there is no other occupation. There's nothing else to do. Here at least there is some sort of guarantee that is given to them. Yeah. And they believe and they are being fed all these uh, dreams of glory, etc. General Saab. So how does India counter this? Do we wait for a few years? Yes, Anand. Uh, yes. We have already our strategy in place, uh, that is to give the people a fair chance to progress in their lives mm. and to develop their area mm. and without any, un, uh, I would say, without any uh, interest of politicians which was always mm. playing a game to keep themselves in power. Hmm. Today, there is a government of the Lieutenant Governor hmm. and they are going to deliver the goods. I only appeal to them to do it faster hmm. and give the youth the jobs that they are looking for and give the people a corruption-free government which they are looking for. Hmm. And with that strategy, and the armed forces are winning the hearts and minds of the people in a very good way. I have seen it physically on the ground hmm. as also... Uh, the terrorists have been eliminated. The incidents of terrorist attacks have reduced. So also infiltration. They may train them in any number of camps. Hmm. I know those camps and some of them we have also hit uh, yes. directly or indirectly. So we will take appropriate action. Anand, I can assure you Ji. that our armed forces are prepared to ensure that there is peace. And as a result of that peace, there will be Aman and Khushali, peace and prosperity. True. And the point is that the number of lives that have been claimed by these Pakistani bullets, somebody has to make them count those. But what they are also doing is that this is the only narrative that's working for them. General Saab, I'm just bringing in Sushant Sareen and Dr. Kamar Chima and then I'll come back to you, sir. Uh, Sushant Sareen. This K bogey is the only one that's working. Now, we've got information and we discussed this on Friday and this is an extension. Friday, we talked about the launch pads. Today, we are talking about the terror camps. You talked about Bak Zameen. Now, actually, in Chakargarh, uh, uh, Asgar Kashmiri has been seen. Rof Asgar has been seen. Chakargarh is the Jesh uh, out, uh, hand. Manshera is with Al-Badar and Bak Zameen has been seen there. 
So all, all, all of these, as a, these, these aspects come in as far as the faces of terror. But there is this desperation, there is this slight confidence where they believe that FATF ki grey list se hum uth jayenge, to humko humari arkat karne do. There is also a desperation to do some karnama ahead of uh, India's Independence uh, Day, that is 15th of August, and to try and do it between the 5th and 15th for various reasons. So, uh, Anand, I think the report which we had discussed on uh, last Friday, I believe, mm. uh, I think the report which you are uh, released today puts more meat in that particular report. Mm. In fact, it corroborates that report. Mm. Uh, as to what uh, is the motivation, is it merely to strike at India and create some kind of a splash or is there something even more sinister? Hmm. Uh, I will uh, present to you uh, a possibility Gee. which I don't think we should ignore entirely. Look at the situation inside Pakistan. The economy is on the verge of failure. Hmm. You have a politics which is so toxic that it has become completely dysfunctional. You have a judiciary which is so compromised that, you know, you won't even employ one of the Supreme Court judges as a law clerk or a munshi somewhere, given the kind of judgments they are giving, uh, overruling their own judgments and contradicting their own judgments, hmm. destabilizing the country in the process. You have an army which is no longer effective and which is being abused left, right and center by hmm. every word. Hmm. Now, normally we have seen that in a situation like this, where the country is going down the gutter, what the Pakistanis do is try and create a distraction. Now, hmm. they know the Indian doctrine of retaliation. I wonder if, uh, you know, th this this activity or uh, this enhanced activity which we are seeing along the line of control hmm. might be actually to provoke some uh, retaliation from India because then the Pakistan army thinks that it can consolidate support behind it. Uh, hmm you know, uh, uh, wave the India threat and stuff like that. It's happened in the past hmm. and it could be happening once again. Hmm. Uh, so that brings me to the question which you had put to General uh, Singh. Uh, and I, you know, the, it, it's a dilemma. Hmm. Uh, should you preempt this kind of an attack uh, and then uh, play hmm. into the hands of the enemy? Or should you let the enemy kind of stew in its own juice and you know, watch the enemy self-destruct. Hmm. Uh, so I think it's a bit of a dilemma for Indian policy makers. Hmm. Clearly, the reports which you have uh, in your possession, hmm. uh, obviously, it's not your investigations editor or somebody, your investigative reporter, who has gone, you know, and uh, dug out this information. It's obviously information which has been shared by... Uh, yeah, Emirates. government, yeah. Uh, which means that the government of India and the armed forces and the security agencies are entirely aware because we've been getting these reports even for about at least six, seven months. The army has been repeatedly warning that some of these launch pads have been activated, that the terror camps are back in action. We've been warning about that. Hmm. Now, if something untoward was to happen over the next couple of weeks, maybe over the next month or so, uh, I think uh, there will be a question uh, before the government whether we should retaliate uh, as per the doctrine or whether we should uh, you know, let it pass and let the Pakistanis stew in their juice, not give any distraction uh, to the self-destruct mode that the Pakistanis are on. Uh, so I think that will remain a bit of a dilemma going forward. Right. But uh, uh, the retaliation option has to be kept alive even if the Pakistanis are able to consolidate it, some support. Look, the problem is going to be Gee. that even if there is some support for the Pakistanis at this point in time, what do they do about their economy, which is completely broken? And the kind of tariffs which they have to re raise, the kind of borrowing which they have to do, uh, the fact that it's completely bankrupt. Uh, mm. You know, they're borrowing more money ever every day to pay off old loans uh, and uh, raising their debt in the process. So I think, uh, you know, they have their back against the wall. But given the Pakistani proclivity of doing something when they have the back to the wall uh, so that they give a message that they are not all finished. But mm. I think they're heading to the, uh, towards being finished uh, very right. fast at the rate at which they're going and the self-destruct mode they're in. Right. Dr. Kamar Chima. 
this is pakistani soil uh, or pakistani controlled uh, area that is uh, that is uh, that is being uh, used so some parts of pakistan some parts of pakistan occupied uh, jammu and kashmir which is there so it is under and one of their some of these camps are one and a half kilometers from the pakistani brigade where it is stationed well i think there are two three perspectives the first one is that uh, what i am hearing here uh, from these uh, tv studio warriors uh, who are coming up with this jingoism including uh, uh, three of you and then there is an indian military which even cannot dare to jump in or even can cannot dare to cross the loc or cannot enter for a single age because they know the consequences of that the third thing what you are talking that there are camps i think this is an old indian rhetoric we have been hearing this for decades there is nothing new and pakistan is fully committed and i think the pa previous pakistani governments and even the including the new government they have said we do not support any kind of a military adventurism in indian occupied kashmir hmm. all what we are calling the kashmir issue is diplomatic political and moral hmm. so whatever the ills and the faults um, mr shishan sarin is talking pakistan is falling economy is disturbed yes things are disturbed but can the indian military dare to attack pakistan or can they dare to cross an inch that is a big question mm -hmm. so you being a good tv studio warriors can talk whatever you you can talk but i think the indian military understand the consequences yeah, you know this rabble rousing and daring is point is your your that. pakistani so army I, I no no kamar chima kamar chima see 90 who had who had 90000 people 90000 soldiers surrendered with their hands up and said ki hum nahi lad sakte wo kaun se desh ki army thi zara yaad kare दूसरी बात सर दूसरी बात सी आई टेल यू आई आई एम टॉकिंग फैक्ट्स आई एम नॉट ट्राइंग टू रैबुल राउस दी अदर आई एम ट्राइंग टू अननेसेसरी डेयर दी अदर थिंग इज ओसामा बिन लादन एक किलोमीटर दूर कौन सी पाकिस्तान कौन सी आर्मी की कौन सी आर्मी की छावनी के जो से, से था वो दैट पाकिस्तान आर्मी ग्लोबल डेजिग्नेटेड टेररिस्ट वॉज इन देयर बैक यार्ड एंड द पाकिस्तान इज डिड नॉट नो सो दैट आर्मी डिड नॉट नो विच आर्मी राइट नाउ हैज अ जियादी तंजीम लर्किंग वन किलोमीटर अवे फ्रॉम इट्स ब्रिगेड हेडक्वार्टर इन कोटली विच आर्मी इज दैट सर so if this is the army which can allow it can allow jihadi tanzeems to fester all around it one wonders what its ability is that jihadi tanzeems are able to recruit and they don't have recruitments in the army which nation is this sir yes they can bring but that is all theoretical which nation which which nation is it mr kamar chima kamar chima i am asking you i am asking you is your army is your army so limp that they cannot fight without jihadis and they need jihadis to fight their war they need they need they need they need to breed terrorists to fight because they still haven't got off got off the shackles of 1971 modi wanted to win elections i think for no i I'm, i'm just i'm just so so i'll tell you what remember remember who came with their hands up and their hands behind their back and saying we don't know how to fight 90000 of them came back and it was it was the people of pakistan who told them wear bangles so do they still wear those bangles that they need that they need terrorists that But they need to breed terrorists to fight a war friends okay so look this sir do not try to raise this jingoism no no, no you try very hard sir you try very hard but i am just saying 1 and 1/2 kilometers from your brigade headquarters and your brigade position there in kotli there is a terror training camp so does your army not know agar aapko nahi pata hai hum bata dete hain aur hum bada hum hum kar dete hain kaam we'll do it sir we'll we'll very very happily and gladly and more effectively do it is weak देखिए आप ही के देश के क्रिकेटर ने कहा था आपसे चार सुबह नहीं चलते चार सुबह नहीं संभलते एंड वी कैन सी दैट ऑन डिस्प्ले सर सर फाइनल वर्ड टू जनरल जे जे सिंह सर कमर चीमा डज नॉट नो कमर चीमा फॉर कमर चीमा टुडे इट इज जस्ट जस्ट गो हेड एंड वॉमिट ऑल दैट इज ऑल दैट यू रिमेंबर सो एंड आई टोटली टेक द फैक्ट दैट बिकॉज दे डोंट हैव अ रिस्पॉन्स दे ऑल्सो डेयर टू डिसरेस्पेक्ट अ सोल्जर सो वी कैन वी कैन लेट दैट स्लाइड but point is sir if this is yeah. how dysfunctional their unit is and their establishment is then is it a story that it is uh, whose last chapter or last page is now being written final word general sir i have to wind up yeah anand uh, mr kamar needs to be reminded what happened during the kargil war mm. i was there as additional dgmo i know everything in that war what happened the people of pakistan were kept in the dark like he is being kept in the dark today hmm. the same story the pakistan army failed in kargil miserably they crossed the line of control well done 
but they didn't think it through. Afterward, they came on their knees and the Americans helped them to uh, save their face. Yes. So he should not forget uh, General Parvez Musharraf's biggest blunder mm. when he uh, came into the heights of Kargil. Mm. So I want to tell Mr. Kamar, not only that, uh, please, please Le listen, listen to listen. me. Listen, listen, I'll tell you what. Please listen Le to me. No, no, Dr. Kamar Chima ka audio kam ki he does not know how to respect a soldier, so he'll not speak over somebody and I'm not going to allow that, please. Yes, the, yes, uh, General Saab, please complete. Yes, I have please. to wind Thank up, sir, you. 30 seconds. Anand. Yeah, so in Pakistan, unfortunately, today, the situation is so bad. I agree with Mr. Sushant Sareen that uh, today the people of Pakistan are saying Ji. to their hukumran, Ab hume kis disha mein le ja rahe ho? Pehle Bangladesh chala gaya, aur agar ab sambhalo ke nahi, तो शायद और भी कुछ हमारा हिस्सा चला जाएगा तो इसलिए आपको ये वार्निंग दे रहा हूं मैं कि आपके खुद ही लोग कह रहे हैं जी कि पाकिस्तान फ्यूचर इज अ वेरी वेरी इन अ बैड सिचुएशन दे विल इम्प्लोड लाइक दिस दे मे लूज पार्ट ऑफ पाकिस्तान विच दे नाउ हैव एंड दे फोर दे नीड टू हैंडल दो पार्ट राधर देन वरिंग अबाउट कश्मीर जी General Saab, thank you very much. Uh, Kamar Chima and uh, Sushant Sarin, thank you very much. We're over time here on debate number two. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to take a very short break. When we come back, we come back with a real report and we tell you why this nation, this pesky enemy across the border is a ticking time bomb. Is a ticking time bomb. We'll tell you why. Stay with us.